Soldiers, we have built an army, 300 strong. Valhalla awaits the worthy. Meads for the rest to return. Scarin found gallons of the stuff. It was all over the beach. The barman couldn't believe his luck. We just need to defeat the Legion. Or should we say the Legion? That's a joke for those who are into comedy. Or those in the medical practice. It's a professional term for an injury. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Is that what we're fighting? That big giant monster? Um, why? I have to head back to camp. I forgot to purchase my rooms. Viking Battle for Asgard is one of the most underrated games you've probably never heard of. It's a Viking game that's best described as Zelda meets Fable meets God of War and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. It's an action adventure style game and it has a silent protagonist in it. His name is Skarin. It was developed by Creative Assembly and published by Sega. Six years later, Sega would also publish a game developed by Creative Assembly called Alien Isolation, which was received really well. It's a shame Viking went as under the radar as it did because it's a surprisingly very well made game. Now, I don't want to celebrate the graphics too much. The graphics are okay. In times, they'll really impress you. You'll see cutscenes, they don't look so nice. It's it's more some of the environments look great, especially the later parts of the game, which are more fiery and snowy. Some parts are fiery, foresty, and frozen. They're a triple F, like me. The earlier environments in the game are field lands and forests and woods, <laughs> things like that. Fairy tale forests, that's why it reminds me of Fable, a big part of it, because it looks like Fable. You'd think this was a Fable DLC if you didn't know any better. But the standout part is the combat. It's also a hack and slash type game and usually hack and slashes don't appeal to me. Games like Devil May Cry didn't appeal to me on first time playing them because they were hack and slashes and I just weren't into beat em ups and hack and slashes as much as I was adventure or action type games or wacky and bizarre first person shooters with a unique story. That's where I like to go. There's a lot of mashing A in this game. You just mash A to get through hordes of enemies. But I like the aesthetic to this game. When you go into battle sometimes, it's like you're going into a Game of Thrones style battle. Oh, I definitely can't go that way. There's a crazy gang coming up that hill. I'm crossing the road. So enemies can get stunned after a few hits and then you can perform a death blow with X. They'll be there like Mortal Kombat, finish him. <laughs> They're just there with an X over their head like, oh my God, I wish I didn't go into battle today. I, will, I didn't know this was gonna be my last day. <laughs> There's special moves you can learn in the arena. After acquiring them, they go to the move list in case you forget. But you go to this arena where this warrior is and you summon him and he teaches you the moves for a cost. There's multiple different parts to this game. The first part, like I said, starts all green in a foresty sort of area. The second is follows a similar pattern there with that. And each area you're in, you learn different moves from this person. And the special moves really change the combat. I'm a type of player, as I've said many times before, I like to exploit economies when I can. And I also like to go for the most dominating strategy in combat. That's, that's my go-to thing. If I have a move that is just overpowered and it kills everyone immediately, I'm using it. I'm not gonna play around. I'm not the playing around type of person when it comes to combat. If I could just bash X one time and everyone around me just gets defeated, I'm going for it. You're all done for, I don't care. <laughs> but with this, they balance it out. So what happens is this, when you go to the combat guy, he teaches you the moves, you get five emblems just under your character's health. Depending on what level the move is at, it could be level one, it takes one emblem. Level two takes two emblems and level three takes three emblems and that's level three is the maximum. When you hit X, it's slow, hard attack. When you press A, it's the quick attack, but you can do a special quick attack and a special slow attack. The heavy one just destroys their shield smashes them into oblivion and there's also a jumping attack you can do which is basically like the power attack but it doesn't cost an emblem but you can't just go crazy use it in combat because the enemies will hit you out of the air like with all hack and slash games there's surprisingly a lot of strategy to the combat some enemies have a big shield and you might not have the shield breaking attack so you have to barge them to disorient them and then you can attack them make an opening but there might be loads of enemies around you and if you're so caught up in i'm so strong and overpowered you'll be getting a rude awakening because these enemies really learn to stop pulling punches with you but so you gotta get used to the blocking he doesn't have a shield he actually has a sword and an axe that's his equipment on the battlefield but you can move out of the way of attacks and the combat is complemented by the sound design <laughs>
there isn't really much of an ost when you're running around it's more intense situations or to enhance an atmosphere they'll bring in music or if you're in heavy combat the crazy soundtrack comes in The story is about Norse mythology. It's to do with gods, dragons, monsters, Vikings, all these type of things. It somewhat reminds me of Game of Thrones. You've got to build the biggest army you can. And this plays heavily into the gameplay. You're actually going around the world building an army by rescuing people, going to the Legion's camps and actually liberating soldiers. That is one of the most satisfying elements of this game. You see your army growing. So what? No thanks? No one's going to say, here's a bandage for your... Legion? I told that joke before, so they should remember it. With each level you play and you liberate the island, you go into a big giant battle at the end. And I love seeing all the soldiers marching together towards the war. And one of the final things you do is get a dragon. That dragon will then follow you into the battle. Nah, no, that's a prank. They gotta be joking with me. Jump in the lava, become a dragon. I have been reborn as a dragon! You command the dragon with runes which you get from defeating certain enemies during this big battle. And honestly, seeing these hundreds of soldiers together on both sides, the Legion and the Vikings, it's really impressive that a 2008 game published by Sega is doing this. It's very cinematic. You've got a dragon flying around in the air. It looks so cool. Oh, snap! The color palette really sets the mood. It's a lot of dingy dead colors. Reds, browns, grays, just dark colors that complement this war feel. But every time you liberate a place, usually the color palette changes to a more vibrant one. So you know that's going to happen after this big battle. You know this is the final battle to go. You start charging into the battle with your guys behind you. You see the biggest guy at the front. You go after him, kill him off. Because you know I'm going to get some runes when I kill this guy. Then use your dragon, blast down some of the shamans or the archers in the sides, causing more havoc to your guys. It's all epic and all these guys around you are supporting you, keeping away the small stupid guys so you can focus on the big guy. You do a QTE, you jump on his head, X, you start stabbing him in his brain and he's just blood spurting everywhere it's so cool oh something else i forgot to mention is you have this power bar meter which is underneath your health and from the shop you can buy runes these runes have elements on them the elements can be ice lightning or fire and when you initiate one of these elements it will share to those in close proximity to you in battle and it drastically alters the playing field from being unfair to impossible for the villains <laughs> they do have one thing on their side and it is the color palette that i explained earlier it can be hard to distinguish the difference between the vikings and the legion at times the vikings do have a red prominent thing on their body but i wish the bluish color on the legion was way more prominent it can be quite hard to see it sometimes takes away a bit from the dramatic battle that's happening with you flailing around at times that said when you do activate one of these elements and you've used it on the enemy they turn into ice so i do know the difference between who's who then this is a game that's all about strength in numbers that's what vikings are vikings are all about strength and they want more numbers <laughs> but you can also just play this game with brute force there was a time early on I couldn't believe I was able to liberate a camp just by sneaking around the back. I broke my guys free and we defeated everyone in seconds. Usually these sort of battles were really hard. I actually tried to go in through the front many times. I tried to fight 15 or so of these guys for ages. I kept on getting stumped. And then I'd used a bit of strategy and it worked. Now, this strategy doesn't always work. Sometimes you do have to fight your way through. But I do like that the game's done that, where you can survey the area first, see what's going on, and then choose your strategy. If you've got enough skill, you can get through the battles, but it ain't easy early on. You takes you a while to get used to the combat if you're fighting more than one or two guys the enemy types in the game are not super varied for the most part you do just fight regular soldiers there's different types some have a shield some are really fast some are just regular foot grunts that just have a sword and they come at you but different enemies require different strategies there's assassins that move really fast then you've got these guys dual wielding axes that kind of look a bit like scarring actually there's giant monsters there's giant heavies with a giant sword that looks like <laughs> it's from final fantasy 7 or something these giant monsters you climb on top of their heads and fight them like it's god of war you don't get those until later in the game but they are bloody scary when you do see them. Outside of the battles, when you're in the camps, you see a lot of NPC camaraderie. This is just harmless fun, Skull. Not a place to train. 
The arena is to the northeast of Brighthelm. You'll see them stretching their arms and stuff. You even see them play fighting. There's be a gathering of people and there's just two guys fighting or something. Other times there's just guys just fighting by themselves, having it out. Sometimes a disagreement among people that happens. Sometimes you just gotta beat up a friend. It's completely normal. What? Exiled from camp. Who told you that? No, no. Is that is that the medical term? No, no. Oh, benign. Yeah, they said my contributions was benign or something like that. Oh, you can't turn into a dragon and burn people. What, you can't just grab someone's head and put your knuckles and rub their hair like that? It's, it's uncomfortable. Ruin my day. So yeah, I've just decided to leave camp for a bit, get some fresh air. Oh! What? You think I should tell them there's tons of soldiers coming to kill them all in their sleep, one by one? Think of the discounts I would get at the shop if they were all dead. Think of all the gold they would leave behind. Mr. Britain's wife would be widowed. I'd be able to have my chance for once. To hell with those guys. They don't even say thanks for rescuing me. I'll just go rescue a new camp of people. I'll start again. You'll see hordes of legions while you're out exploring. So you have to be careful to not get ambushed as they don't play fair. This adds a level of authenticity to the war and the atmosphere. You know when you see these people to be careful and back off. There's been times where I accidentally stumbled into a legion camp and I was just like, that, I'm done. They just start shooting arrows down on your head and they'll come chasing after you. You can't get away. You will be caught. <laughs> Sometimes you might think I'm gonna get away by jumping off a cliff. Don't worry, there's fall damage, you will die. Ooh. Ah. The control is a bit clunky and stiff, but don't let that discourage you because it fits the brutal Vikings. They're athletic and skilled, but very much a brute in appearance. Being like a ninja just wouldn't feel right for these guys. There's a fast travel in this game. They've got this system where you go between lay stones in the blink of an eye. That's basically what they say. It's not a giant map, but it can take maybe 10 minutes to run from one side to the other. And it just makes it easier to avoid unnecessary battles you've done many times before when you're revisiting locations. The economy in this game is very simple and it's quite interesting actually, because you find gold around the map for the most part. You can buy treasure maps that tell you where this gold is. There's a treasure chest map, urn map and a gold bags map. Each of them give you varying different levels of currency on each of the levels. And this currency is used to buy the special moves. It's also used to buy the runes and any equipment in the shop. You can also buy a permanent health upgrade, a temporary health upgrade, potion, a throwing axe, and a firebomb. So a criticism I will have for this game is, you pretty much have to get 100% to finish the game normally. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm the sort of person who plays a game and goes from A to B usually. I don't like having to explore. The good thing is, the exploration in this kind of works similar to the exploration in A Link Between Worlds, where you're exploring the map and technically you're progressing as you explore in an indirect sort of way. That's what happens here too. I found myself thinking, you know what, let me go and explore for the gold. I need that anyway to buy the upgrades and buy the runes and buy the special moves because that would help me become overpowered as fast as possible. And we all know I like two things, being overpowered and exploiting an economy. So why not exploit the economy to become overpowered? <laughs> while i'm exploring i'll liberate the guys that i'm gonna liberate anyway i need them for the story while i'm doing that let me just also find the lay stones because i'm on a fast travel back to places and then i was thinking while i'm doing that if i'm right next to a mission that happens to be there i'll just quickly do that too and that's the similar sort of strategy i thought about when playing link between worlds it basically works exactly that way it's not an easy thing to get right in games but this game certainly got that right i just wish you didn't have to get basically a hundred percent it's more along the lines of having to do 99 percent of stuff in the world but that's still way too much I think 60 is a healthy balance. One of the side quests to earning cash in this game is picking up mead that is dropped off crashed ships. You normally see this stuff near the beaches. I don't see anyone getting to drink it. I don't get to drink it. I'm pretty sure in Fable you can get drunk. The person who buys it from you is like, we're running dry. I heard this person drop their mead off the crashed ships or something. And yeah, you go and find it for the guy. Ah, Scarin. I'd serve you, but I'm out of me. I love to hear you speak, but I've got to walk away. I knew, I knew, I knew where some mead was. I knew it right there. I knew, I knew it. I got it. I might as well rescue these guys while I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm at the beach. I'm just chilling. I'm going to rescue these guys. It takes so long to untie you. 
If only I can just quickly slice the rope with my uh, my axe or something. That'd, that'd be very helpful, game. Thank you, thank you very much. Ah, Skarin, you've brought the Nifelberg meat? I know you're running low on that. That's why everyone's drinking meat constantly at your bar. The voiceovers in this game are outstanding. Through and through, it really feels authentic. Every single person you talk to, man or woman, they all sound excellent and fit the environment. And they start strong. Before even any visuals, the first thing they show off is the voice acting. They have none other than Brian Blessed, or at least I think it's him on the intro opening voiceover, the dialogue, the, the narrator, that's the word, that's the word I'm looking for, the narrator. He's there like, I'm Brian Blessed. This is a story about gods and mortals. Man must stop evil before it comes to his realm. <laughs> I'm Brian Blessed. That's basically what he says word for word. They came born of battle and bloodshed, those that would stand against the darkness, those that would ask for no reward in this life, yet to the darkness they returned, for their time in this world was fleeting, and Valhalla called to them, and the world of mortals mourned, for it sensed its own demise. Because, like I said, you basically have to do 100% of everything. The missions that are meant to be side quests in this game, which technically are main missions too. In a normal game, which would be a fetch quest or something, you have to do those without... There's no choice, you have to do them. That ends up being a lot of the type of missions you do. Oh, go get this key to open this door to let this guy go collect this thing here and bring this here. This one person annoyed me. Go defeat him. I'm only going to join your team if you get this thing for me. I'm only going to join your team if you kill a bunch of these random monsters in the middle of nowhere. I just wish there was a more definitive mainline quest that we could go on. And maybe you go on the mainline quests and ignore the side quests. Your army's a bit smaller. It makes the battles a bit harder for you or maybe have to do more in the main battles because your army's smaller i don't know what the compromise would have been but it basically this game ends up taking quite a long time to beat this game is everything that should have been it took me embarrassingly to admit 13 hours to beat i got stuck a few times actually and i don't know if it's because i wasn't fully paying attention to the story and i just missed a simple direction sometimes but you'd be surprised on how easy it is to get lost. Even though you know where the mission is to go to, sometimes it's just a small detail you don't pay attention to or something and you don't know where to go. But this is a great underrated game that I strongly recommend, especially to those who were disappointed by Game of Thrones final season. This might not be the ending you want, but it's just me sitting on a hill by myself doing nothing. That's, that's it. Maybe I've gone mad. Oh, 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 oh.